I know it's kind of odd to discuss games that are so far out that we practically can't even envision them at all, but with Call of Duty, games get greenlit years in advance. Naturally, and as of recent years, it seems like leaks for those keep happening earlier and earlier. And believe it or not, the next few years have already had information leaked recently, outwards of Sledgehammer's next title even. Now, today's discussion is a bit of a mixed bag because a large portion of this discussion was noted and recorded before the events of the layoffs that happened yesterday. So there may be some tonal back and forth here because on one hand, there's some promising things in the pipeline, it seems like, for Call of Duty in the next couple of years. But on the other, with so much uncertainty at studios, with perhaps fundamental shifts to contract work, possibly in the future for COD, as it is done with Halo, well, things might also not be so great. So today we're running down a bit of everything. So let me know your thoughts down below. Drop a like if you enjoy and consider subscribing for more Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, COD, and other FPS content coverage. I'd love to have you in the community. Also, make sure to follow over on Twitch where we'll be live a bunch more in the near future. But for now, let's jump into it. So firstly, to start out with the stuff that was already on deck, the stuff that was scheduled here for yesterday and then shifted to today. Firstly, there was a leak on the timetable for the next couple of years here. Previously, it was reported in a now ominous headline, Sledgehammer Games is going going back remote as it finds a new office by Tom Henderson over at Insider Gaming. The report itself was more so just talking about a relocation to a smaller facility in their home-based Foster City studio, but it was also mentioned that with that announcement that they would once again have their own game headed up by them after Infinity Ward's next title. So that would make the pipeline for COD titles in the near future of COD 2024, presumably Black Ops Gulf War, being developed by Treyarch, COD 2025, the rumored Black Ops 2 sequel, right now, as we'll touch on in a second, might not be primarily developed by Treyarch, but supported by Treyarch. COD 2026, likely the next Infinity Ward title, likely in the Modern Warfare universe, probably in Modern Warfare 4, and then COD 2027, Sledgehammer's next title, whatever that may be. Now, what's interesting is that it was also recently mentioned by Tom Henderson that COD 2025's developer is apparently in flux. Now, I'd seen whispers recently that Raven could be stepping in for a narrative port portion of that, maybe like the continuation of multiplayer from Treyarch is built upon as we saw it here with this year with Modern Warfare 3 as to Modern Warfare 2. But if that's the case where like Raven would be coming in for campaign and it's a bit of a mixed bag collectively, I think I'd be fine for that, at least on a narrative side of things and seeing where it could go from there for multiplayer and zombies. I don't think too many are aware of Cold War's development, but from my understanding and the puzzle working on how everything shook down, Treyarch managed that project at a top level, sure, but the campaign was mostly completed when they were brought in, meaning that the addition of like Mason and Woods was just kind of for show and would only be used to add to the Black Ops name. And that would make sense as to why they weren't really a main focus of it. The game was always meant to be a Cold War game, a story of its own, but the Black Ops elements and branding was just added later, closer to the end of development. So while Cold War in a year of its support, I didn't play a whole ton just because I was fatigued by matchmaking. I was still really into Warzone. I was actually having a lot of fun with zombies as well. While I didn't play a whole ton of the multiplayer and stuff at the time, the campaign was phenomenal with Cold War. I love that one, especially with the multiple endings. So if that truly was Raven's baby and they can replicate it, I'm all here for that. But then the larger timetable as a whole is something that we can talk about in question because well, that means that Treyarch's COD game of 2024, Black Ops Gulf War, that would have four years to develop. A big thing here that we've talked about already that means that that's the longest dev time that we've seen any COD game get uninterrupted. Yes, there are smaller teams here and there, like the ranked teams, like the zombies teams that did have to work on some stuff intermittently with other games, but for the core of the game, the multiplayer, the campaign, and stuff like that, it'll be something that is truly a four-year developmental cycle, or should be. Again, nothing's really been reported in terms of turmoil leading up to this point here and where we are now. Again, we'll touch on that in a second because layoffs did just happen. 2025, though, again, who knows? That is rumored to be year two of whatever Black Ops sort of cycle we're in here, a Black Ops 2 sequel narratively, but with the developer in flux, that means more time for whoever could work on it, and it's not just Treyarch working on two games at once, essentially, which would definitely be nice. Also, giving more focus then for Treyarch to be on 2024, be present in that development, and again, a couple of studios perhaps working to build an expansion out for that, and maybe having, again, a little bit of everything where one studio's campaign, one's multiplayer, one is zombies at that point, so could work out pretty nicely, actually. Infinity Ward, that'll be another one that's four years of development, likely in that Modern Warfare universe, maybe Modern Warfare 4, and Sledgehammer, four years to develop again. 
And I think that regardless of what we've seen to date, that's what I'm probably most excited for here in regards to the prospect of the future. Infinity Ward absolutely has to win me back. I think that if they do have that early access content as they do every year, if at the time I'm invited back, who knows what the future holds, if I'm invited at all to play early, even if I can't talk about it, I think it'll sort of be known how I feel based off of coverage, if I continue it or not, or the tonal presentation of the information. But them more than anyone else, I definitely think they have to win me back here after the lead up of a year of entirely broken promises on feedback and communication. But frankly, the one that I think I'm most excited for, even though it's something that's still so far out, is Sledge's next game. Triarch and Infinity Ward can absolutely deliver. We've seen that time and time again throughout the last 15 years. But you think about the developmental turmoil that Sledgehammer has gone through. The last time they had a full developmental window uninterrupted was Advanced Warfare in 2014. It will be 13 years since their last project that they could focus solely on developing their vision at that point. Think about that. Modern Warfare 3 was a job that had to be done in 16 to 18 months. They dropped Vanguard support to work on that. Vanguard was a game that was kind of filler because they got removed from Cold War as co-lead devs with Raven, where Treyarch had to come in and then put the finishing touches on it. So Vanguard is one of those things like, okay, what can we put together in place of the year of what would have been Treyarch's title? What can we do as fast as possible to make it a game on its own? Which you had the new Modern Warfare engine that they were working on. You had World War II stuff that they were already very familiar with. It was just a sort of blending of both of those. Call of Duty World War II was reported many times that it was initially intended to be Advanced Warfare 2, but because of shifts in sentiment around advanced movement, they had to return to boots on the ground gameplay, and likely during the development of that initially planned Advanced Warfare 2, they had to completely switch everything around to World War II. And then Advanced Warfare, well, that was the first game as mainline and lead devs that they got to work on it uninterrupted. So all the way since 2014, and I know that the bones here for Modern Warfare 3 are mostly Infinity Ward and Modern Warfare 2 stuff, but when it comes to content, when it comes to meaningful rewards, when it comes to taking community feedback into account, I think Sledgehammer's done a pretty good job by comparison. And so that, you give them a full dev window to make a game of their vision that can be something that is beneficial to the players and rewarding for the players. I'm looking forward to that, frankly. But that leads us to the update for this discussion. That was what we were gonna talk about regardless here in the coming days. But then yesterday happened, a massive amount of layoffs across Activision and all these subsidiary studios. Sledgehammer Games lost 30% of its staff. Again, coming back to that initial report, ominous at that because it wasn't mentioned at the time that there would be any sort of layoffs, but Sledgehammer going back to remote as it finds a new office, well, that kind of set everything up. That set the dominoes up in place here where it was like a, if only we knew type of situation. High Moon Studios lost over 10% of its staff. Toys for Bob lost around 40% of its staff. Treyarch, Raven, Infinity Ward, and a lot lost substantial members to their teams, which makes all of this for the future, what should be, I think, something that's kind of positive given that we see the potential for four years uninterrupted for each of these upcoming games, it kind of makes this more grim if teams are being stripped of the team members that are needed to develop these games. Crunch time and dev work is already something that is way too much for individual devs out there. There's just too much work and not enough members of the teams to get everything done. That's why you see delays, why you see things broken at times and everything like that. So to now have the same amount of work, maybe even more, but with less on the teams to manage it, it just doesn't sound like it'll bode super well. And listen, like one thing that I have to say, I was very surprised that I even had to specify this at all when I mentioned it on Twitter, but like, yes, I fully understand that layoffs happen with every single merger ever. That's a reality. But is it also not true that when you have a gaming industry hitting new record revenue numbers year over year, you have Bobby Kotick who got a $400 million golden parachute just to leave the company. And on the same day as the layoffs, Microsoft overtook Apple as the most valuable company in the world with over $3 trillion in valuation. Is it not also true that considering all of that, it's pretty shitty to lay off and strip nearly 2000 people of their livelihood? It's not even like it was redundancies for every single position. Like it'd be one thing if those jobs were already a position held by someone else. But when you're stripping away whole QA departments, animators, art, and other studio positions, you're just tearing down a mechanism that's already operational. And the other thing I feel like just as a whole is that people are way too quick to dismiss the human element of this kind of stuff. Yes, they'll likely find jobs. Layoffs do happen with mergers. Yes, that's business. But again, it's not mutually exclusive that both the reality of that and saying that it sucks that people are out of their jobs and a ways to provide for their families, those things can both be simultaneously true. So I implore you to keep that in mind, especially when a common defense to this I've seen is, well, the games have sucked. Maybe this will kick them into gear. I promise you, the ones that made the design directive decisions, the fundamental gameplay changes and stuff like that, the ones who probably added the things that you hated, 
they are not the ones that lost their livelihoods yesterday. The ones who did are the average Joes, probably just the people coming and working for games and stoked as hell they're getting to work on a game franchise that they likely grew up loving and playing religiously. The whole situation sucks. And for the future, again, it makes things just incredibly uncertain. It's very possible that now that COD is a Microsoft IP, it could get the Halo treatment. It could go that way, which I'm not a huge fan of. I'm not looking forward to that if that's the case. For those unaware, Halo Infinite got contract workers outsourcing the development of the game on 18 month contracts. And a lot of the stuff, if you were translating it over to COD, 18 months, you're not going to finish a whole project before that point. So you're going to have a lot of turnover at that point because that outsourced work gets to be a workaround about like perma hiring stuff. So if you have to have that turnover within development, that's obviously not going to be a good thing. Halo fumbled with Infinite, and while I'd hope that Microsoft is now more aware of what Call of Duty brings to the table annually in revenue, and that hopefully they give more focus to it, I mean, really, who knows? So it's just one of those things that, while on one hand it can kind of look positive that we have now, it's seemingly set larger dev windows that hopefully shouldn't be interrupted at this point for the next couple of years. The uncertainty of everything is absolutely in question now. So that said, that is where we're at. Just wanted to fill you guys in on what you may have missed. Some stuff that I think is important to talk about. And yeah, that's where we're at. So let me know your thoughts down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And until next time, I'll see you in the next one. Take care and peace.